The Baroque UK, US, is a highly ornate and often extravagant style of architecture, music, painting, sculpture and other arts that flourished in Europe from the early 17th until the mid-18th century. It followed the Renaissance style and preceded the Rococo in the past often referred to as late Baroque and neoclassical styles. It was encouraged by the Catholic Church as a means to counter the simplicity and austerity of Protestant architecture, art and music, though Lutheran Baroque art developed in parts of Europe as well. The Baroque style used contrast, movement, exuberant detail, deep color, grandeur and surprise to achieve a sense of awe. The style began at the start of the 17th century in Rome, then spread rapidly to France, northern Italy, Spain and Portugal, then to Austria and southern Germany. By the 1730s, it had evolved into an even more flamboyant style, called rocaille or rococo, which appeared in France and Central Europe until the mid to late 18th century. Origin of word The term Baroque comes from the Portuguese word barroco, meaning an irregularly shaped pearl. The word is of uncertain origin, but may be related to the Spanish baruca, baruca a wart. The word was first used as an art historical term in 1855 by the Swiss art historian Jacob Burckhardt in an article in the journal Le Cicerone to describe the period that followed the Renaissance. The term, style baroque, entered the dictionary of the Académie Française in 1878. The English spelling is from the French. Spellings in other languages include barocco in Spanish, barocco in Italian and baroque in German. The French word was used as early as 1531 to describe pearls in an inventory of Charles V's treasures, alternatively, a derivation from the name of the Italian painter Federico Barocci has been suggested. Another suggested origin of the term is the philosophical term barocco, used in French to describe a particularly elaborate and convoluted argument. It was a mnemonic word, used to memorize the terms of one particular syllogism of Aristotle, the fourth syllogism of the second figure of twenty-four modes. An example of a barocco is, All P is S, but some F is not S therefore S is not P. In the 18th century, the term was usually used to describe music, and was not flattering. In an anonymous satirical review of the premiere of Jean-Philippe Rameau's Hippolyta et Arisi in October 1733, which was printed in the Mercure de France in May 1734, the critic wrote that the novelty in this opera was «du baroque», complaining that the music lacked coherent melody, was unsparing with dissonances, constantly changed key and meter, and speedily ran through every compositional device. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who was a musician and composer as well as philosopher, wrote in 1768 in the Encyclopédie. Baroque music is that in which the harmony is confused, and loaded with modulations and dissonances. The singing is harsh and unnatural, the intonation difficult, and the movement limited. It appears that term comes from the word barocco used by logicians. In 1888, the art historian Heinrich Wolflin published the first serious academic work on the style, Renaissance und Baroque, which described the differences between the painting, sculpture, and architecture of the Renaissance and the Baroque. Topic. Architecture, origins and characteristics The Baroque style of architecture was a result of doctrines adopted by the Catholic Church at the Council of Trent in 1545–63, in response to the Protestant Reformation. The first phase of the Counter-Reformation had imposed a severe, academic style on religious architecture, which had appealed to intellectuals but not the mass of churchgoers. The Council of Trent decided instead to appeal to a more popular audience, and declared that the arts should communicate religious themes with direct and emotional involvement. Lutheran Baroque art developed as a confessional marker of identity. In response to the great iconoclasm of Calvinists, Baroque churches were designed with a large central space, where the worshippers could be close to the altar, with a dome or cupola high overhead, allowing light to illuminate the church below. The dome was one of the central symbolic features of Baroque architecture illustrating the union between the heavens and the earth, the inside of the cupola was lavishly decorated with paintings of angels and saints, and with stucco statuettes of angels, giving the impression to those below of looking up at heaven. Another feature of Baroque churches are the quadratura, trompe l'oeil paintings on the ceiling in stucco frames, either real or painted, crowded with paintings of saints and angels and connected by architectural details with the balustrades and consoles. Quadratura paintings of Atlantes below the cornices appear to be supporting the ceiling of the church. Unlike the painted ceilings of Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, which combined different scenes, each with its own perspective, to be looked at one at a time, the Baroque ceiling paintings were carefully created so the viewer on the floor of the church would see the entire ceiling in correct perspective, as if the figures were real. 
the interiors of Baroque churches became more and more ornate in the High Baroque, and focused around the altar, usually placed under the dome. The most celebrated Baroque decorative works of the High Baroque are the Chair of St. Peter and the Baldacchino of St. Peter both by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The Baldequin of St. Peter is an example of the balance of opposites in Baroque art, the gigantic proportions of the piece, with the apparent lightness of the canopy, and the contrast between the solid twisted columns, bronze, gold and marble of the piece with the flowing draperies of the angels on the canopy. The Dresden Frauenkirche serves as a prominent example of Lutheran Baroque art, which was completed in 1743 after being commissioned by the Lutheran City Council of Dresden and was "...compared by 18th-century observers to St. Peter's in Rome." The twisted column in the interior of churches is one of the signature features of the Baroque. It gives both a sense of motion and also a dramatic new way of reflecting light. The cartouche was another characteristic feature of Baroque decoration. These were large plaques carved of marble or stone, usually oval and with a rounded surface, which carried images or text in gilded letters, and were placed as interior decoration or above the doorways of buildings, delivering messages to those below. They showed a wide variety of invention, and were found in all types of buildings, from cathedrals and palaces to small chapels. Baroque architects sometimes used force perspective to create illusions. For the Palazzo Sparta in Rome, Borromini used columns of diminishing size, a narrowing floor, and a miniature statue in the garden beyond to create the illusion that a passageway was 30 metres long, when it was actually only 7 metres long. A statue at the end of the passage appears to be life size, though it is only 60 centimetres high. Borromini designed the illusion with the assistance of a mathematician. Topic: <inaudible> Italian Baroque architecture. The first building in Rome to have a Baroque facade was the Church of the Gesù in 1584. It was plain by later Baroque standards, but marked a break with the traditional Renaissance facades that preceded it. The interior of this church remained very austere until the High Baroque, when it was lavishly ornamented. In Rome in 1605, Paul V became the first of series of popes who commissioned basilicas and church buildings designed to inspire emotion and awe through a proliferation of forms, and a richness of colors and dramatic effects. Among the most influential monuments of the early Baroque were the façade of St. Peter's Basilica 1606 and the new nave and lodge which connected the façade to Michelangelo's dome in the earlier church. The new design created a dramatic contrast between the soaring dome and the disproportionately wide facade, and the contrast on the facade itself between the Doric columns and the great mass of the portico. In the mid to late 17th century, the style reached its peak, later termed the High Baroque. Many monumental works were commissioned by Popes Urban VIII and Alexander VII. The sculptor and architect Gian Lorenzo Bernini designed a new quadruple colonnade around St. Peter's Square, 1656 to 1667. The three galleries of columns in a giant ellipse balance the oversized dome and give the church and square a unity in the feeling of a giant theatre. Another major innovator of the Italian High Baroque was Francesco Borromini, whose major work was the Church of San Carlo al Quattro Fontaine or St. Charles of the Four Fountains. The sense of movement is given not by the decoration, but by the walls themselves, which undulate and by concave and convex elements, including an oval tower and balcony inserted into a concave traverse. The interior was equally revolutionary. The main space of the church was oval, beneath an oval dome. Painted ceilings, crowded with angels and saints and trompe l'oeil architectural effects, were an important feature of the Italian High Baroque. Major works included the entry of Saint Ignace into Paradise by Andrea Pozzo (1685–1695) in the Church of Saint Ignatius in Rome, and the Triumph of the Name of Jesus by Giovanni Battista Gaulli in the Church of the Gesù in Rome (1669–1683), which featured figures spilling out of the picture frame and dramatic oblique lighting and light dark contrasts. The style spread quickly from Rome to other regions of Italy. It appeared in Venice in the Church of Santa Maria della Salute (1631–1687) by Baldassare Longhina, a highly original octagonal form crowned with an enormous cupola. It appeared also in Turin, notably in the Chapel of the Holy Shroud (1668–1694) by Guarino Guarini. The style also began to be used in palaces. Guarini designed the Palazzo Carignano in Turin, while Longhina designed the CA Rezonico on the Grand Canal, 1657, finished by Giorgio Massari with decorated with paintings by Giovanni Battista Tipolo. A series of massive earthquakes in Sicily required the rebuilding of most of them, and several were built in the exuberant late Baroque or Rococo style. Topic: <laughs> Spanish Baroque architecture. 
The Catholic Church in Spain, and particularly the Jesuits, were the driving force of Spanish Baroque architecture. The first major work in the style was the San Isidro Chapel in Madrid, begun in 1643 by Pedro de la Torre. It contrasted an extreme richness of ornament on the exterior with simplicity in the interior, divided into multiple spaces and using effects of light to create a sense of mystery. The cathedral in Santiago de Compostela was modernized with a series of Baroque additions beginning at the end of the 17th century, starting with a highly ornate bell tower 1680, then flanked by two even taller and more ornate towers, called the Obradorio, added between 1738 and 1750 by Fernando de Casas Novoa. Another landmark of the Spanish Baroque is the chapel tower of the Palace of San Telmo in Seville by Leonardo de Figueroa. Granada had only been liberated from the Moors in the 15th century, and had its own distinct variety of Baroque. The painter, sculptor and architect Alonso Cano designed the Baroque interior of Granada Cathedral between 1652 and his death in 1657. It features dramatic contrasts of the massive white columns and gold décor. Some of the most and ornamental and lavishly decorated architecture of the period was designed by the brothers Charaguera, who worked primarily in Salamanca and Madrid. The Church of San Esteban in Salamanca 1693 is one of the most ornate Baroque churches anywhere. Their other works include the buildings on the city's main square, the Plaza Mayor of Salamanca 1729. .Other notable Spanish Baroque architects of the late Baroque include Pedro de Ribera, a pupil of Charaguera, who designed the Royal Hospice of San Fernando in Madrid, and Narciso Tomé, who designed the celebrated El Transparent Altarpiece at Toledo Cathedral 1729 which gives the illusion, in certain light, of floating upwards. The architects of the Spanish Baroque had an effect far beyond Spain, their work was highly influential in the churches built in the Spanish colony in Latin America and the Philippines. The church built by the Jesuits for a college in Tepotzotlan, with its ornate Baroque facade and tower, is a good example. <laughs> Central Europe and Rococo 1740s to 1770s. From 1680 to 1750, many highly ornate cathedrals, abbeys, and pilgrimage churches were built in Central Europe, in Bavaria, Austria, and what is now the Czech Republic. Some were in Rococo style, a distinct, more flamboyant and asymmetric style which emerged out of the Baroque, then replaced it in Central Europe in the first half of the 18th century, until it was replaced in turn by Classicism. The princes of the multitude of states in that region also chose Baroque or Rococo for their palaces and residences, and often used Italian trained architects to construct them. Notable architects included Johann Fischer von Erlach, Lucas von Hildebrandt and Dominicus Zimmermann in Bavaria, Balthasar Neumann in Brühl, and Matthaus Daniel Poppelmann in Dresden. In Prussia, Frederick II of Prussia was inspired the Grand Trianon of the Palace of Versailles, and used it as the model for his summer residence, Sansorcy, in Potsdam, designed for him by Georg Wenceslaus von Nobelsdorf Another work of Baroque palace architecture is the Zwinger in Potsdam, the former orangery of the Palace of the Dukes of Saxony in the 18th century. One of the best examples of a Rococo church is the Basilica Wiesenheiligen, or Basilica of the Fourteen Holy Helpers, a pilgrimage church located near the town of Bad Staffelstein near Bamberg, in Bavaria, southern Germany. The basilica was designed by Balthasar Newman and was constructed between 1743 and 1772, its plan a series of interlocking circles around a central oval with the altar placed in the exact center of the church. The interior of this church illustrates the summit of Rococo decoration. Another notable example of the style is the pilgrimage church of Ways German, Wieskisch. It was designed by the brothers J.B. and Dominicus Zimmermann. It is located in the foothills of the Alps, in the municipality of Steingarten in the Weilheim Schorngau district, Bavaria, Germany. Construction took place between 1745 and 1754, and the interior was decorated with frescoes and with stucco work in the tradition of the Wesserbrunner School. It is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Another notable example is the St. Nicholas Church in Prague 1704 built by Christoph Dienzenhofer and his son Kilian Ignaz Dienzenhofer. Decoration covers all of walls of interior of the church. The altar is placed in the nave beneath the central dome, and surrounded by chapels, light comes down from the dome above and from the surrounding chapels. The altar is entirely surrounded by arches, columns, curved balustrades and pilasters of colored stone, which are richly decorated with statuary, creating a deliberate confusion between the real architecture and the decoration. The architecture is transformed into a theater of light, color and movement. Topic. French Baroque or Classicism 
France largely resisted the ornate Baroque style of Italy, Spain, Vienna and the rest of Europe. The French Baroque style often termed Grand Classicism or simply Classicism in France is closely associated with the works built for Louis XIV and Louis XV. It features more geometric order and measure than Baroque, and less elaborate decoration on the facades and in the interiors. Louis XIV invited the master of Baroque, Benigni, to submit a design for the new wing of the Louvre, but rejected it in favor of a more classical design by Claude Perrault and Louis Laveau. The principal architects of the style included François Mansart, Château de Balleroy, 1626 to 1636; Pierre Le Muet, Church of Val de Grace, 1645 to 1665; Louis Laveau, Vaux le Vicomte, 1657 to 1661; and especially Jules Hardouin Mansart and Robert de Cotte, whose work included the Gallery des Glaces and the Grand Trianon at. Versailles 1687 to 1688 Mansart was also responsible for the baroque classicism of the place Vendôme 1686 to 1699 the major work of the period was the palace of Versailles begun in 1661 by Laveau with decoration by the painter Charles Le Brun the gardens were designed by André Le Notre specifically to complement and amplify the architecture the Gallery des Glaces Hall of Mirrors, the centerpiece of the chateau, with paintings by Le Brun, was constructed between 1678 and 1686. Mansart completed the Grand Trianon in 1687. The chapel, designed by Decotte, was finished in 1710. Following the death of Louis XIV, Louis XV added the more intimate Petit Trianon and the highly ornate theatre. The fountains in the gardens were designed to be seen from the interior, and to add to the dramatic effect. The palace was admired and copied by other monarchs of Europe, particularly Peter the Great of Russia, who visited Versailles early in the reign of Louis XV, and built his own version at Peterhof Palace near St. Petersburg, between 1705 and 1725. <laughs> <laughs> Russian Baroque The debut of Russian Baroque, or Petrine Baroque, followed a long visit of Peter the Great to Western Europe in 1697–98, where he visited the Château of Fontainebleau and Versailles and other architectural monuments. He decided, on his return to Russia, to construct similar monuments in St. Petersburg, when he moved the Russian capital there in 1712. Early major monuments in the Petrine Baroque include the Peter and Paul Cathedral and Menshikov Palace. During the reign of Empress Anna and Elizaveta Petrovna, Russian architecture was dominated by the luxurious Baroque style of Bartolomeo Rastrelli, called Elizabethan Baroque. Rastrelli's signature buildings include the Winter Palace, the Catherine Palace and the Smolny Cathedral. Other distinctive monuments of the Elizabethan Baroque are the Bell Tower of the Troitsa Sergeyeva Lavra and the Red Gate. Painting. Baroque painters worked deliberately to set themselves apart from the painters of the Renaissance and the Mannerism period after it. In their palette, they used intense and warm colors, and particularly made use of the primary colors red, blue and yellow, frequently putting all three in close proximity. In their lighting, they avoided the even lighting of Renaissance painting and used strong contrasts of light and darkness on certain parts of the picture to direct attention to the central actions or figures. In their composition, they avoided the tranquil scenes of Renaissance paintings, and chose the moments of the greatest movement and drama. Unlike the tranquil faces of Renaissance paintings, the faces in Baroque paintings clearly expressed their emotions. They often used asymmetry, with action occurring away from the center of the picture, and created axes that were neither vertical nor horizontal, but slanting to the left or right, giving a sense of instability and movement. They enhanced this impression of movement by having the costumes of the personages blown by the wind, or moved by their own gestures. The overall impressions were movement, emotion and drama. Another essential element of Baroque painting was allegory. Every painting told a story and had a message, often encrypted in symbols and allegorical characters, which an educated viewer was expected to know and read. Early evidence of Italian Baroque ideas in painting occurred in Bologna, where Annibal Carracci, Agostino Carracci and Ludovico Carracci sought to return the visual arts to the ordered classicism of the Renaissance. Their art, however, also incorporated ideas central to Counter-Reformation, these included intense emotion and religious imagery that appealed more to the heart than to the intellect. Another influential painter of the Baroque era was Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio. His realistic approach to the human figure, painted directly from life and dramatically spotlit against a dark background, shocked his contemporaries and opened a new chapter in the history of painting. 
Other major painters associated closely with the Baroque style include Guido Reni, Domenichino, Andrea Pozzo, and Paolo de Matteis in Italy, Francisco de Zabarin and Diego Belathketh in Spain, Adam Elsheimer in Germany, and Nicolas Poussin and Georges de Latour in France. Though Poussin spent most of his working life in Italy, Poussin and Latour adopted a classical Baroque style with less focus on emotion and greater attention to the line of the figures in the painting than color. Peter Paul Rubens was the most important painter of the Flemish Baroque style. Rubens' highly charged compositions reference erudite aspects of classical and Christian history. His unique and immensely popular Baroque style emphasized movement, color, and sensuality, which followed the immediate, dramatic artistic style promoted in the Counter-Reformation. Rubens specialized in making altarpieces, portraits, landscapes, and history paintings of mythological and allegorical subjects. One important domain of Baroque painting was quadratura, or paintings in trompe l'oeil, which literally fooled the eye. These were usually painted on the stucco of ceilings or upper walls and balustrades, and gave the impression to those on the ground looking up with that they were seeing the heavens populated with crowds of angels, saints, and other heavenly figures, set against painted skies and imaginary architecture. In Italy, artists often collaborated with architects on interior decoration. Pietro da Cortona was one of the painters of the 17th century who employed this illusionist way of painting. Among his most important commissions were the frescoes he painted for the Palace of the Barberini family 1633 to glorify the reign of Pope Urban VIII. Pietro da Cortona's compositions were the largest decorative frescoes executed in Rome since the work of Michelangelo at the Sistine Chapel. François Boucher was an important figure in the more delicate French Rococo style, which appeared during the late Baroque period. He designed tapestries, carpets and theatre decoration as well as painting. His work was extremely popular with Madame Pompadour, the mistress of King Louis XV. His paintings featured mythological romantic, and mildly erotic themes. <laughs> <laughs> Sculpture The dominant figure in Baroque sculpture was Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Under the patronage of Pope Urban VIII, he made a remarkable series of monumental statues of saints and figures whose faces and gestures vividly expressed their emotions, as well as portrait busts of exceptional realism, and highly decorative works for the Vatican, including the imposing chair of St. Peter beneath the dome in St. Peter's Basilica. In addition, he designed fountains with monumental groups of sculpture to decorate the major squares of Rome. Baroque sculpture was particularly inspired by ancient Roman statuary, particularly by the famous statue of Laocoon from the 1st century AD, which was on display in the gallery of the Vatican. When he visited Paris in 1665, Benigni addressed the students at the Academy of Painting and Sculpture, he advised the students to work from classical models, rather than from nature. He told the students, "...when I had trouble with my first statue, I consulted the Antonus like an oracle." Notable late French Baroque sculptors included Étienne Maurice Falconet and Jean Baptiste Pagal. Pagal was commissioned by Frederick the Great to make statues for Frederick's own version of Versailles at Sanssouci in Potsdam, Germany. Falconet also received an important foreign commission, creating the famous statue of Peter the Great on horseback found in St. Petersburg. In Spain, the sculptor Francisco Salcio worked exclusively on religious themes, using polychromed wood. Some of the finest Baroque sculptural craftsmanship was found in the gilded stucco altars of churches of the Spanish colonies of the New World, made by local craftsmen. Examples include the Rosary Chapel of the Church of Santo Domingo in Oaxaca, Mexico 1724-31. Topic. Music and ballet The term Baroque is also used to designate the style of music composed during a period that overlaps with that of Baroque art. The first uses of the term Baroque for music were criticisms. In an anonymous, satirical review of the premiere in October 1733 of Rameau's Hippolyta et Aracy, printed in the Mercure de France in May 1734, the critic implied that the novelty in this opera was du Baroque. Complaining that the music lacked coherent melody, was filled with unremitting dissonances, constantly changed key and meter, and speedily ran through every compositional device. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who was a musician and noted composer as well as philosopher, made a very similar observation in 1768 in the famous Encyclopedia of Denis Diderot. Baroque music is that in which the harmony is confused, and loaded with modulations and dissonances. The singing is harsh and unnatural, the intonation difficult, and the movement limited. It appears that term comes from the word barocco used by logicians. 
Common use of the term for the music of the period began only in 1919, by Kurt Sachs, and it was not until 1940 that it was first used in English in an article published by Manfred Buchhofzer. The Baroque was a period of musical experimentation and innovation. New forms were invented, including the concerto and sinfonia. Opera was born in Italy at the end of the 16th century, with Jacopo Peri's mostly lost Daphne, produced in Florence in 1598, and soon spread through the rest of Europe. Louis XIV created the first Royal Academy of Music in 1669. The poet Pierre Perrard opened an Academy of Opera in Paris, the first opera theater in France open to the public, and premiered Pomone, the first grand opera in French, with music by Robert Cambert, with five acts, elaborate stage machinery, and a ballet. Heinrich Schutz in Germany, Jean-Baptiste Lully in France, and Henry Purcell in England all helped to establish their national traditions in the 17th century. The classical ballet also originated in the Baroque era. The style of court dance was brought to France by Marie de Medici, and in the beginning the members of the court themselves were the dancers. Louis XIV himself performed in public in several ballets. In March 1662, the Académie Royale de Danse, was founded by the king. It was the first professional dance school and company, and set the standards and vocabulary for ballet throughout Europe during the period. Several new instruments, including the piano, were introduced during this period. The invention of the piano is credited to Bartolomeo Cristofori (1655–1731) of Padua, Italy, who was employed by Ferdinando de Medici, Grand Prince of Tuscany, as the keeper of the instruments. Cristofori named the instrument un simbolo di cipresso di piano e forte a keyboard of Cyprus with soft and loud", abbreviated over time as Piano 40, 40 Piano, and later, simply, Piano. <laughs> Composers and examples Giovanni Gabrielli, c. 1554–1612, Sonata Pian e Forte, 1597, in Ecclesiastes from Symphoniae Sacrae Book 2, 1615, Giovanni Girolamo Capsberger, c. 1580–1651, Libro Primo di Villanelle, 20, 1610. Claudio Monteverdi, 1567–1643, L'Orfeo, Favola in Musica, 1610. Heinrich Schutz, 1585–1672, Musicalische Exequien, 1629, 1647, 1650. Francesco Cavalli, 1602 to 1676, Legisto, 1643, Ercole Amante, 1662, Scipione Africano, 1664. John Baptiste Lully, 1632 to 1687, Armide, 1686. Marc Antoine Charpentier, 1643 to 1704, Te Diem, 1688 to 1698. Heinrich Ignaz Franz Biber, 1644 to 1704, Mystery Sonatas, 1681. John Blow, 1649 to 1708, Venus and Adonis, 1680 to 1687. Johann Pachelbel, 1653 to 1706, Canon in D, 1680. Arcangelo Corelli, 1653 to 1713, Twelve Concerti Grossi, Op. 6, 1714. Marin Marais, 1656 to 1728, Sonnerie de Sainte Genevieve du Mont de Paris, 1723. Henry Purcell, 1659 to 1695, Dido and Aeneas, 1688. Alessandro Scarlatti, 1660 to 1725, Lonis de Negli Amori, 1680, Il Pompeo, 1683, Mitridate Upator, 1707. François Couperin, 1668 to 1733, Les Barricades Mysterieuses, 1717. Tommaso Albinoni, 1671 to 1751, Didone Abandonata, 1724. Antonio Vivaldi, 1678 to 1741, The Four Seasons, 1725. Jan Dismas Zelenka, 1679 to 1745, Il Serpente di Bronzo, 1730, Missa Sanctissima Trinitatis, 1736. Georg Philipp Telemann, 1681 to 1767, Der Tag des Gerichts, 1762. Johann David Heinichen, 1683 to 1729. Jean Philippe Rameau, 1683 to 1764, Dardanus, 1739. George Friedrich Handel, 1685 to 1759, Water Music, 1717, Messiah, 1741. Domenico Scarlatti, 1685 to 1757, Sonatas for Harpsichord. 
Johann Sebastian Bach (1685–1750), Toccata and Fugue in D minor (1703–1707), Brandenburg Concertos (1721), Saint Matthew Passion (1727). Nicola Porpora (1686–1768), Semiramide Rikonoshuta (1729), Giovanni Battista Pergolesi (1710–1736), Stabat Mater (1736). Topic: Theatre. The Baroque period was a golden age for theatre in France and Spain. Playwrights included Corneille, Racine, and Molière in France, and Lope de Vega and Pedro Calderón de la Barca, Spain. During the Baroque period, the art and style of the theatre evolved rapidly, alongside the development of opera and of ballet. The design of newer and larger theatres, the invention, the use of more elaborate machinery, the wider use of the proscenium arch, which framed the stage and hid the machinery from the audience, encouraged more scenic effects and spectacle. The Baroque had a Catholic and conservative character in Spain, following an Italian literary model during the Renaissance. The Hispanic Baroque theatre aimed for a public content with an ideal reality that manifested fundamental three sentiments Catholic religion, monarchist and national pride, and honour originating from the chivalric, knightly world. Two periods are known in the Baroque Spanish theatre, with the division occurring in 1630. The first period is represented chiefly by Lope de Viga, but also by Terso de Molina, Gaspar Aguilar, Guillén de Castro, Antonio Mira de Amescua, Luis Vélez de Guevara, Juan Ruiz de Alacón, Diego Jiménez de Enciso, Luis Belmont Bermúdez, Felipe Godinez, Luis Quinones de Benevente or Juan Pérez de Montalban. The second period is represented by Pedro Calderón de la Barca and fellow dramatists Antonio Hurtado de Mendoza, Álvaro Cabillo de Aragón, Jerónimo de Cancer, Francisco de Rojas Zorrilla, Juan de Matos Fragazo, Antonio Coelho y Ochoa, Agustín Moreto, and Francisco Bances Candamo. These classifications are loose because each author had his own way and could occasionally adhere himself to the formula established by Lope. It may even be that the manner of Lope was more liberal and structured than Calderon's. Lope de Viga introduced through his Art Nuevo de Hesa Comedias en este tiempo, 1609, the new comedy. He established a new dramatic formula that broke the three Aristotle unities of the Italian school of poetry, action, time and place, and a fourth unity of Aristotle which is about style, mixing of tragic and comic elements showing different types of verses and stanzas upon what is represented. Although Lope has a great knowledge of the plastic arts, he did not use it during the major part of his career nor in theatre or scenography. The Lope's comedy granted a second role to the visual aspects of the theatrical representation. Terso de Molina, Lope de Viga, and Calderon were the most important play writers in Golden Era Spain. Their works, known for their subtle intelligence and profound comprehension of a person's humanity, could be considered a bridge between Lope's primitive comedy and the more elaborate comedy of Calderon. Terso de Molina is best known for two works, The Convicted Suspicions and The Trickster of Seville, one of the first versions of the Don Juan myth. Upon his arrival to Madrid, Cosimo Lotti brought to the Spanish court the most advanced theatrical techniques of Europe. His techniques and mechanic knowledge were applied in palace exhibitions called fiestas and in lavish exhibitions of rivers or artificial fountains called naumachias. He was in charge of styling the gardens of Buen Retiro, of Zazuela and of Aranges and the construction of the theatrical building of Coliseo del Buen Retiro. Lope's formulas begin with a verse that it unbefitting of the Palace Theatre Foundation and the birth of new concepts that begun the careers of some play writers like Calderón de la Barca. Marking the principal innovations of the new Lopesian comedy, Calderón's style marked many differences, with a great deal of constructive care and attention to his internal structure. Calderon's work is in formal perfection and a very lyric and symbolic language. Liberty, vitality and openness of Lope gave a step to Calderon's intellectual reflection and formal precision. In his comedy it reflected his ideological and doctrine intentions in Above the Passion and the Action, the work of Otto's Sacramentala achieved high ranks. The genre of Commedia is political, multi-artistic and in a sense hybrid. The poetic text interweaved with medias and resources originating from architecture, music and painting freeing the deception that is in the Lopesian comedy was made up from the lack of scenery and engaging the dialogue of action. The best known German playwright was Andreas Griffius, who used the Jesuit model of the Dutch Joost van den Vondel and Pierre Corneille. There was also Johannes Velten who combined the traditions of the English comedians and the Commedia dell'Art with the classic theatre of Corneille and Molière. His touring company was perhaps the most significant and important of the 17th century. Topic. End of the style, condemnation and academic rediscovery 
Madame de Pompadour, the mistress of Louis XV, probably without intending it, contributed to the decline of the Baroque and Rococo style. In 1750 she sent her nephew, Abel François Poisson de Vandiers, on a two-year mission to study artistic and archaeological developments in Italy. He was accompanied by several artists, including the engraver Nicolas Cochy and the architect Soufflot. They returned to Paris with a passion for classical art. Vandiers became the Marquis of Marigny, and was named Royal Director of Buildings in 1754. He turned official French architecture toward the neoclassical. Cochy became an important art critic, he denounced the petty style of Boucher, and called for a grand style with a new emphasis on antiquity and nobility in the academies of painting of architecture. The pioneer German art historian and archaeologist Johann Joachim Winkelmann also condemned the Baroque style, and praised the superior values of classical art and architecture. By the 19th century, Baroque was a target for ridicule and criticism. The neoclassical critic Francesco Milizia wrote, Borromini in architecture, Bonini in sculpture, Pierre de Cortone in painting. a plague on good taste, which infected a large number of artists. In the 19th century, criticism went even further. The British critic John Ruskin declared that Baroque sculpture was not only bad, but also morally corrupt. The Swiss born art historian Heinrich Wolflin started the rehabilitation of the word Baroque in his Renaissance un Baroque. Wolflin identified the Baroque as movement imported into mass", an art antithetic to Renaissance art. He did not make the distinctions between mannerism and Baroque that modern writers do, and he ignored the later phase, the academic Baroque that lasted into the 18th century. Baroque art and architecture became fashionable between the two world wars, and has largely remained in critical favor. The term, Baroque, may still be used, usually pejoratively, describing works of art, craft, or design that are thought to have excessive ornamentation or complexity of line. Italian Baroque <inaudible> <inaudible> Spanish Baroque <inaudible> Baroque and Rococo in Germany, Austria and Central Europe Style Louis XIV See also Notes Books cited in text Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Baroque. Encyclopædia Britannica, 3 11th ed., 1911. The Baroque and Rococo Culture Webmuseum Paris Barrick in Val di Noto, Sizilian Baroque in the History of Art the Baroque style and Louis XIV influence Melvin Bragg's BBC Radio 4 programme In Our Time, The Baroque. Baroque Style Guide. British Galleries. Victoria and Albert Museum. Archived from the original on 19 August 2007. Retrieved 16 July 2007.